Hey guys, Clay here, back with another installment of Mastering Your Inner Fury. Today, let's talk about timers and cooldowns, and how you should be managing and keeping track of these to optimize your DPS. I do want to note, you want to be pretty familiar with carrying out your basic rotation as you do this, since you're going to be needing to do some quick math as you carry out your rotation throughout the fight. I heavily recommend using a boss mods like Big Wigs in order to track when the next mechanic will happen and when ads are going to spawn. Now of course, don't just put it off to the side where you're not going to look at it, put it somewhere where you can actively, you know, get this information and still pay attention to the fight. Since we do so much damage during our battle cry window, it's very important that you get as much value as you can out of these windows. For example, on fights like Spellblade and Gul'dan, you ideally want to have your battle cry and Odin's Fury up for all of the ad spawns. But you of course want to also make sure you're casting as many battle cries as you can outside of these ad spawns to optimize your DPS, so you can really take advantage of any Odin's Champion procs or any Convergence of Fates procs. Basically, if you have Convergence, you can assume that your battle cry will have a 30 second cooldown from when you use it. Of course, there will be situations where the cooldown is longer and situations where the cooldown is shorter, but generally for me, 30 seconds is a really safe bet. For example, on Spellblade, I know I'll be able to use battle cry twice before I need to save it up for the Frost adds. And for Mythic Elison, I know that as long as I use battle cry before she goes off and does her second set of rings, I'll have my battle cry ready when she finishes her third set of rings when we're bursting her down. So for Mythic Elison, sometimes I'll get two battle cries off, and sometimes I'll get three battle cries off, really depending on how lucky I am with Convergence procs and Odin's Champion procs. With the RNG that these two different procs give us on how they affect battle cry, it's very important for us to make these split decisions throughout the encounter. And to help you make these decisions, you need to be constantly tracking the timers on a fight and know how long you have before a mechanic happens. For example, don't do what I did here on a Gordian kill where I used battle cry and draft the souls right before flames came out, causing me to drop a stack of fire on the ground in melee and causing unnecessary stress for the rest of the melee group. In regards to looking at your timers, you also want to make sure you're keeping track of your other cooldowns along with Battle Cry. For example, I'm willing to wait 10 seconds to use Battle Cry if I know Odin's Fury would be up. And also, I'm willing to wait 15 seconds on Battle Cry if I know Draft of Souls will be up. You can even go a step further and keep track of your Odin's Champion procs since you know how this can affect your cooldowns. For example, if you have Odin's Fury ready in 4 seconds and you just proc Odin's Champion, you can actually hit Battle Cry, then you can hit Rage and Blow, Rampage, and Odin's Fury. Generally, you would have had to press Odin's Fury once GCD behind, but since you had your Odin's Champion procs, you would have your Odin's Fury ready for that GCD. It's small stuff like this that can really add up over the course of a fight, you know, over the course of a raid, so you guys don't necessarily have to start off with tracking everything at the same time. But I would suggest at least starting to track ad spawns first, making sure your battle cry own spheres line up with those. As always, thanks for checking out this video. Feel free to subscribe to the channel to see more warrior content. See ya!